Welcome back to ASEAN Newsroom, and here are the economic news. China, India, and ASEAN will become crucial market um, to Australian trade and investment in the near future due to the strong economic growth and closer integrations among countries in the Asia-Pacific region. Speaking to the nation yesterday during his visit to Bangkok, chief economist of the Australian Trade Commission, Tim Harcourt, said the Australian government is targeting China, India and ASEAN as priority markets to drive its trade and investment growth. Fast economic growth, the large market size and high development in many sectors have made those markets most attractive for Australia. China has already taken over as Australia's largest trading partner ahead of the European Union. India and ASEAN have also continued to play more significant roles in Australian trade. Harcourt said that ASEAN has become a more important destination for Australian investment than Germany and Switzerland in the past few years. He said the region would play a bigger role in the Australian economy after the ASEAN economic integration. Although there have been some differences between ASEAN members, the region has stepped in the right direction towards economic integration. The region should continue to strive for closer cooperation among member states and strive for simple integration rather than focus on difficulties like having a single currency. <laughs> To promote investment and trade growth, Harcourt suggested that Thailand should focus more on intra-trade promotion among ASEAN countries as well as drive domestic consumption rather than rely too much on exports. <coughs> Australia can strengthen cooperation in helping Thailand become more attractive among foreign investors by cooperating in education development and investment in high technology manufacturing and service businesses. Potential services that Australian investors have eyed in Thailand included financial and banking, architecture and construction. It is also interested in investing more in the mining and agriculture sectors, food and beverage manufacturing and car assembly in Thailand as Australia has high technology for food production with a good record on dealing with environmental concerns. He also believes that after the general election next month in Thailand, the country will continue to have stronger economic growth. Having an election is wonderful and important in a, dem a democratic system. It has shown that Thailand is open and prompt in drawing more foreign investment into the country. The Bank of Thailand said yesterday that net, capital, net foreign capital inflow had exceeded 10 billion US dollars in the first five months of this year, which could further fuel inflation. Governor Prasant Tayoratwaragun said there is very high liquidity in the system due to the current account surplus and bond purchases by overseas investors. In the first five months of this year, overseas investors were net buyers of 454 billion baht in bonds, according to the Thai Bond Market Association. The bond remains quite stable and there is no pressure on capital inflows after the central bank hiked the policy rate by a quarter of a percentage point to 3% last week. The chief central bank said foreign capital has lately moved more rapidly both in and out. However, this was to be expected. The baht was quoted at 30.28 against the US dollar yesterday. For almost a month, the currency has been bridge bound due to uncertainties over the US economy recovery and the Eurozone's sovereign debt crisis. Nothing irregular was found with influx of capital, considering foreign investors' concern over problems of the world economy. Prospects for the U.S. recovery remain gloomy while Europe continues to confront sovereign debt crisis. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, was expected to discuss a change in their production quarters in the, at the Cartels meeting in Vienna on Wednesday. The ministers from OPEC member countries arrived in the Austrian capital on Tuesday. Analysts say the ministers could increase those quotas in an attempt to push fuel prices lower and take some pressure off the world economy. The move would be largely symbolic since most OPEC countries already produce more than their daily quota. 
Raising the quota could allow some countries to boost production even more. Also on the radar is the U.S. Energy Department's release of its monthly short-term energy outlook and weekly petroleum inventories report. The recent trend has been for rising supplies and falling demand. Oil was below 98 U.S. dollars per barrel on Tuesdays, as investors anticipated increased crude production from OPEC countries. Lam Shabang Port is strongly advised by the Bangkok Ship Owners and Agents Association to dismiss its target to be a regional hub and expand its port for larger cargo ships instead. The Bangkok Ship Owners and Agents Association, or BSAA, considered Lam Shabang Port's target to be an Indochina hub at as unrealistic. BSAA Chairman Suwat Asawat Tongkun said Lam Shabang Port, located at the Gulf of Thailand, has geographic limitation, such as being distant from the main shipping routes unlike, un unlike ports such as Singapore. He said the transportation of goods at Lam Shabang Port takes two days. Because of the port's restricted location, the BSAA encouraged the port authorities of Thailand to turn its attention to the country's import and export, instead of banking and being a regional hub. The association urged reconstruction of the port to allow larger-sized cargo ships to embark. So what said currently, the largest cargo ship that can enter the Lam Shabang port measures only 6,000 to 7,020 foot equivalent unit or TEU, while ports to Vietnam, Indonesia and Singapore can receive ships as large as 13,000 TEU. Vietnam has increased its products for shipping due to cheaper labor. Its port also attracts cargo ships with roads to Europe and the United States. So what say Thailand, therefore, should work to support export and import as there is potential growth in import and export. Meanwhile, the BSAA insisted that the land bridge project, an attempt to link the port to the Andaman Sea with transports at the Gulf of Thailand, was not cost effective. The project would require companies to pay an additional 10,000 baht per container for transport by sea and train. Global food prices will remain high and volatile throughout this year and next year due to um, record food production. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, or FAO, twice yearly food outlook analysis says rising demand will absorb most of the higher output. It says its index of food prices in May was at 232, only six points below February's record high of 237. The FAO says higher food prices could mean poor countries will see food import costs rise by up to 30 percent. That would mean poor countries spending 18 percent of their total import bills on food this year, compared with the world average of 7 percent. The organization says that the next few months will be critical in, de in determining how major crops will fare this year. The FAO's May Index, which measures price changes in a range of essential foodstuffs, including cereals, oasis, dairy, meat and sugar, was 37 percent higher than a year ago. David Hollum, director of the FAO's Markets and Trade Division, said the general situation for agricultural crops and commodities is tight, with the world prices at stubbornly high levels, posing a threat to many low-income food deficit countries. The FAO says although prospects are encouraging in some countries, such as Russia and Ukraine, where the conditions either too much or too little rain could hamper wheat and maize production in Europe and North America. Coming up after the break, we have a special report on social media and election um, organized by Nation Multimedia, Nation Multimedia Group.